In this video, I'm going to teach any beginner how to shoot the Neowise Comet their first time with the equipment you already own. Hello, my name is Chris Attrell. I have taught night photography to over 6,000 students all across Western Canada. The most common question is, where can I shoot the comet? Right now, the comet is in a northern sky, just above the horizon line, and the best time to see it is about an hour and a half after the sunset, until about an hour and a half before sunrise. And you don't need any apps to find it. You can see it with your naked eye. Because it's so close to the horizon, you want to be away from light pollution or at a high vantage point. In southwest Saskatchewan, we don't have a lot of high vantage points or light pollution. No one is really certain on how long we're going to be able to view the comet, but one thing seems to be certain is it'll start getting higher in the sky and as it does, it'll become less visible over time. So I'm only counting on it being here for close to the end of July. So all you need to get started is a DSLR or mirrorless camera and a tripod. You don't even need an expensive camera, expensive lenses to shoot this. In this video, I'm going to shoot with a 10 year old Canon Rebel with the kit lens that came with it. I'm also going to shoot with a brand new Canon M50 mirrorless camera. This is an entry level camera that's really popular right now. I'm going to shoot with my Pro Nikon 610 with a 50 millimeter prime lens. So let's go through the camera settings. To shoot the comet, you're going to have to shoot in manual mode. On the mode dial on your camera, switch that to M for manual. Here we're going to set ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. The first value we're going to change is our ISO. For most night photography, you want to shoot high ISO values. So for beginners, let's set our ISO to 3200. It's a great starting point. If you have a pro camera with a pro lens, you could probably shoot 800 or 1600 ISO. But since you're a beginner, let's just set it to 3200. I use 3200 ISO all the time. Most cameras have an ISO button on them. Just press that button and you can change the values. For Sony's and Fuji's, you're gonna have a function button on the back of your camera. It'll say FN. For Nikon cameras, it's a little more tricky. You're going to have to go into the menu button, shooting settings, and then choose ISO sensitivity settings. Change that to 3200 and make sure you turn auto ISO off. And when you're done shooting at the end of the night, don't forget to put your ISO settings back to where you had it before. The next value we're going to change is our aperture. When you're shooting at night, you generally use what's called wide apertures. That's the iris in your lens. You can open it really wide to let in the most amount of light. This is regulated by your lens. Most cameras came with a kit lens. The widest aperture on that kit lens is 3.5. That f-stop value is usually on the back of your camera. If you want to change those f-stop values, some cameras have two wheels one of the wheels will change the aperture value. Change it down to the lowest number possible. And if your lens is wide open, you should be able to get down to 3.5. If your camera only has one command dial, you're gonna to have to hold the exposure compensation button down and spin the command dial at the same time to change the aperture value. The next setting we're gonna change is our shutter speed. Depending on what time of night you start shooting the comet, you're probably going to start at 15 seconds and maybe go to 25. If there's a little bit of blue in the sky, 15 seconds will work just fine. So let's get our value set to 15 seconds. When you spin your command dial, you'll notice some values changing. Those are your shutter speeds. You're probably looking at some pretty fast shutter speeds right now. But if you keep spinning your command dial till you see inches symbols, that means seconds. 
So one inch is one second, five inches is five seconds. So 15 seconds is 15 inches. Use that for your first shot. If it's too dark, try 20 seconds or 25 and maybe even 30 seconds. If it's too bright, try 13, 10 or eight seconds. The only value you're gonna to have to change when you're out shooting is your shutter speed. And I highly recommend you figure out how to change your settings at home before you go shoot the Comet. In fact, you might as well get your camera all set up. So all you have to do is go out into the field, put your camera on a tripod and focus. Then you're all set up. And speaking of focusing, most cameras can't autofocus when it's really dark out. So you're gonna to have to manually focus. Most lenses have a switch on them for manual focus or autofocus. Switch that to manual focus. Some cameras, the manual focus button is on the back of the camera or in the camera settings. If you can't find it, just refer to your manual. Once you're in manual focus, you can play with your focus ring and see things going in and out of focus pretty easy. But it gets even easier. Let's turn on live view. Some cameras, live view is on by default, including Sony's, Fuji's, and this Canon M50. But for most Canons, you have to turn it on yourself. Look for a button with a red dot beside it. Once you press that button, live view should activate. For Nikons, look for a button or a switch that says LV. This will activate live view. Once you're in live view, it's pretty easy to find a very distant light source and manually focus on it. It could be a cell phone tower, city lights. In fact, some cameras, including this Canon M50, can see the comet in live view. I was stunned by the fact I can manually focus on the comet in only this Canon M50. But otherwise, just focus on some other distant light source, but it gets even easier. There's a magnification button somewhere on the back of your camera. For Canons, it's usually on the top right. For Nikons, it's usually on the left somewhere. You can magnify your screen up to 10 times. Now try playing with the focus ring. It's very easy to get something in focus when you use this method. If you are struggling with focusing or camera settings, I have two different videos on my channel you can watch. Beginner night photography and three methods for focusing in the dark. But now that your camera's set up, all you have to do is go out there and hit the shutter button and adjust shutter speeds as necessary. Now let's quickly talk about lenses. I got you set up for a kit lens, but if you happen to have a prime lens, those are lenses with no zoom on it, because the aperture on them is a lot wider and letting more light, we can change some of the settings. This 24 millimeter prime lens on this 10 year old Canon did an amazing job. The kit lens did a good job. This 24 millimeter prime lens is for sale at just about any camera store. For entry level Nikon cameras, I recommend a 35 millimeter prime lens. They're about $230. If you use the Canon 24 millimeter or the Nikon 35 millimeter, change your aperture to 2.8. That happens to be my favorite aperture for shooting in the dark. And the results will be better. If you have one of those expensive full frame cameras, I recommend either using the 50 millimeter or 85 millimeter prime lens. And if I was using a full frame with one of those lenses, I would change my aperture to 2.0 so I can lower my ISO to either 800 or 1600. So in summary, if you're a beginner with a kit lens, ISO 3200, aperture 3.5 with a 15 to 25 second exposure to begin with. If you do decide to upgrade to a prime lens, ISO 3200, aperture 2.8 with again 15 to 25 second exposures. And I put a link to all those lenses in the description below. If you have a question or a comment or a suggestion, leave it in the comment section below. And if you happen to get a great shot, please tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see your picture. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll have about 20 to 30 more low light night photography videos coming this summer. So let's take a look at some of the pictures. 
Here it is with a 10-year-old Canon Rebel with a kit lens. It did pretty good. Here's a picture with a 24mm prime lens on it. I think it did much better. This Canon M50 did an amazing job even with the kit lens. And finally, here's a picture with my Pro lens with a 50mm prime lens. As you can see, you don't need expensive equipment to shoot this comet. I really hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you for joining me tonight and good luck with your shots.